Ryan Jarrell here for Fight Bananas, and my next guest will be back in action at UFC Tampa December the 14th when he takes on Felipe Lima. And, of course, it is Miles Chapo. John's on the program. Miles, how you doing? I'm doing well, man. How you doing? I'm good. You must be just itching to get back in there. Two fight cancellations with Cody Garbrandt. I can't imagine uh, your level of excitement to get to December 14th. Yeah, man, it's been a long extended camp, you know, but I really believe that it was all God's plan. You know, I got in the best shape of my life for Cody. Um, I was preparing for it like it was a fight of my life. And um, and it, I just continued that on through this next camp. You know, I took a couple of days to just rest my body and rest my mind. And um, now I, I, I feel like I feel like this is a tougher challenge. You know, I was preparing for the fight of my life, even though I feel like this is a tougher challenge. So it kind of propelled me. It just set me up to be even in better shape. You know, I thought I was in good shape for uh, November 9th against Cody. But, man, my cardio now, when I show up on December 14th, is just going to be bananas. Everything, my strength and all that's just going to be um, like it's never been before. So I'm excited, man. I definitely am just ready to get in there and throw some hands. That's exciting, man. It, it, let me ask you, is it is it disappointing, though? I mean, Cody Garbrandt, former champion, guy's got a big name. Were you kind of hoping to, to get a win over someone of, of his caliber and, and his popularity rather than someone that's just, you know, 1-0 in the UFC? I am. I, you know, it, it was a little disappointing. Um, I was bummed out for my fans as well. You know, there was a lot of people that were really excited to see me fight Cody, you know, but in the back of my mind, I just kept, I just felt like I wasn't sure if he was going to show up. You know, when I talked to my manager about it, when he moved the fight back the first time, I was like, okay, I'll move it back one time. But if he doesn't show up November 9th or something happens, we just got to find a new opponent, you know, because um, and I was kind of I was keeping an eye on my opponents and I was kind of watching some of the things he was doing. And it just looked like the guy just wanted to ride off in the sunset on a motorcycle. You know, it didn't seem like he was really training or anything like I mean, I know he was training, but. I don't know. I just always felt like he had one foot in and one foot out. So I was really disappointed for everybody that was looking forward to that fight. I had a lot of people who wanted to see me go in there and fight him and um, knock him out. But but it is what it is. You know, um, when I got this new matchup there for a second, I was like, man, I was about to fight a former champ. You know, I was about to fight somebody with a big name. And now they gave me this guy who has one fight in the UFC. But then I saw the comments on all these people count me out. And I realized, like, this fight may reap more benefits than the Cody fight did. Yeah, if I fight Cody, like, it's awesome on my resume. I get to knock out a former champ, all that. But, I mean, we both know what everybody would say right after. Oh, Cody was on his way out. Cody Cody doesn't have it anymore, this and that. You know, um, now I get opportunity to really um, put a stop to somebody that everybody thinks is going to be the next thing. So um, there, there's a give and take with everything. And I just um, I trust in God and I trust in uh, his time and his plan. And I, I'm just here to do the work and fight people, you know, so it don't really matter to me at the end of the day. It's going to be an exciting matchup. Can't wait to watch uh, for this most recent fight cancellation with Cody. Didn't you get all the way to Vegas and then found out that the fight is is off? Yeah, dude, I was already in Vegas. It was already fight week. Like, that's that's the worst thing. Like, I hate getting to fight week. And everybody's like, oh, it's fight week. Everybody's so excited and all this stuff. And then I got to get on freaking Instagram. Be like, hey, guys, the fight's off. Like, I mean, for me, I can handle it. You know, it's a fight game. Like, I like I know how I know how this thing goes. You know, I myself has had, had to pull out on a Wednesday because I tore my um, shoulder. I'm, I dislocated my shoulder, tore my pec, tore my labrum, all this stuff. You know, just a freak accident. Um so, so I understand, I get, I get it, but I just hate to get people pumped up and excited and then have to be like, sorry guys, I'm not like, it's not happening, you know, but, but yeah, it was, uh, it's unfortunate. If you get this win over Lima and the UFC comes to you and says, Hey, Miles, we want to, we want to match you with Cody next. Would you, would you be excited about that? You're going to be like, no, I, I don't want to do it again. Dude, I don't, I don't know. You know, that's a good question. I, I feel like. I feel like maybe I would, you know, I, I'd never really turned down anything. So maybe I would accept it. Then I would just like have a backup plan. I would just know in my head, you know, th it's, it's funny though, because this whole camp, I made one post not too long ago after the first thing saying like, um, Cody, I pray that you have a healthy camp. You know, I'm watching you, you know, just, you need to show up on November 9th. Like this is, you can't run from destiny, all this. And in my head, like I'm not a big crap talker. But in my head, I felt like, man, maybe I should be poking this dude. Maybe I be, should, should be talking a little shit. Like, should be like, show up. You need to show up because I just had a feeling that he wasn't going to. So if I had any regrets, it's that I would have went on social media and would have talked a little more shit and would have uh, made it clear that I thought that he was going to back out at the last minute. And maybe that would have made him show up. But um, so if they did offer that, then I'd definitely be doing some of that gameplay. But I don't know. I, I feel like I'm kind of past Cody, you know, um, I got I got my eyes on some other guys.
All right. Well, fair enough. I totally understand that. As far as Lima goes, only lost one fight in his career. He's in a 12 fight win streak. Like you said, a lot of people feel like he could be a guy down, down the road, someone to really, you know, climb the, the ladder in the division. Where is he most dangerous? Where do you have to, to watch out for him the most? You know, I feel like his two biggest danger factors is just that he's very dynamic. He throws a lot of different things, a lot of a lot of wild things at wild times. And he's a winner. You know, when I when I watch people, I assess, like, what is this guy like? And I feel like Lima is a winner. You know, he's not going to give up on himself. He's going to go out there and he's going to try to finish fights. He's going to try his best to win. But he's facing a winner to the freaking core. Like, I've been a winner my entire freaking life. And so, um, and I have a ton of experience. And I just feel like, uh, yeah, I feel like he poses some, I feel like he poses some threats. But this is going to go in there and he's going to run into a brick wall. You know, when I saw people count me out of this fight, it just fired me the freak up. Like, I'm like, you guys have no idea the type of fighter I am. Like, you guys have no idea the people that I've already beat. Like, I mean, um, so... So yeah, I'm excited. I'm excited about it because I think that um, the UFC and a lot of the fans do see this guy as like a as like an up and coming guy. You know, trains at, trains that good gym with Jamaev and all of them, uh, Swedish Sweden All Star team or whatever it is. Um, you know, so um, I think people are riding this guy pretty high, and um, he's gonna run do a brick wall, and I'm I'm looking to take all that juice. I'm glad you mentioned your experience because I, I wanted to ask you, you know, when you look at someone like this guy that, yeah, I mean, he, he has 13 or 14 professional fights, but only one fight in the UFC. You've been fighting in the UFC for a long time now. How much of a difference or how much of an edge does that give you going against someone that really hasn't been at the top of, of the heap, someone that isn't been fighting on, under the brightest of lights when you've been here for a while? I do think it gives me a little bit of an edge, but um, at the end of the day, a fight's a fight. You know, he, he had a really good debut. You know, he came in there and he beat a guy who um, who's on a three-fight, one streak in the UFC, a tough guy. But you see that a lot. Like, we just saw that this past weekend with David Onama when he fought, um, I don't know what that guy's Romero. name was. But yeah, what was that guy's record? The guy's like, I mean, yeah. eight and three. I don't know. He didn't have that good of a record. And he's going against a guy like David Onama, but he gets this UFC debut on short notice. He came in on like a week's notice and people are so excited, so much adrenaline. They go in there and they put on a great performance. Like, I don't think anybody saw that fight going that way. It was like, he was like the biggest undercard on the card. Um, so underdog on the card. So I think that did play a factor into it, but also, and I also don't think Naimov really expected Lima to be um, the winner that he is. I, I think that's what it came down to is just that you saw Lima slow down a little bit in the second. The second round probably went Naimov's way. And then his corner got Lima fired up and like, hey, you need to go win this fight. And he went out there and put the pressure on him and just found his choke and finished it. You know, so um, it like I was, I don't know. I wasn't that crazy impressed by that. Like I said, I see his skill set. I see that. I see that he's a tough competitor. I see that he likes to win. I see that he works hard. But um, I also see holes in his game, and I also just see this as a seed that's gonna um, that that has a lot of uh, that bears a lot of fruit. You know, there's gonna be a lot of benefits to this win, and um, and yeah, I'm excited for it. We're gonna circle back to UFC Tampa in this matchup before we get out of here today. But a few things uh, else I wanted to ask you. You mentioned David Onama, so UFC 309. Just your your takeaways on you know John Jones beating Stipe. I mean, for my money, what what I saw for what it's worth, Stipe just looked he looked old. I don't know if is that if that's what John did or you know if it was just maybe Stipe he hasn't fought in three years and he's just not the same guy. Like, what what did you think of of that main event fight? I mean, did anybody see Stipe winning? Did it like did anybody in the world see Stipe winning? Listen, I love John Jones. You know, I, I think that he is um one of the greatest of all time. I think it's so hard to say who is the greatest of all time because it like I mean it's just so hard to compare. Um I think he's one of the greatest of all times, but that fight went about the way that I thought it was gonna go. You know, um and I respect John um in his decisions, not wanting to fight um Aspinall and, and all this, but I don't know. At the end of the day, I feel like you got to either be all the way in or all the way out. Like if you're going to be the champ, you should fight who the division shows is the best. You know, you should if you're going to still do this game, then you have like an obligation to yourself to fight the best and put and see what your potential lies. If you don't, if you don't want to risk your record, um, you don't want to risk your legacy against these new up and comers and this and that, then I mean, it's probably time to step away. But I'm not here to give John any advice. I'm not here to criticize. I mean, uh, I can't imagine what all he's been through in this fight game. I mean, the dudes, I mean, you you can just look at his resume. So, like I said, I love him. I think he's one of the greatest of all times. And um, 
but um uh, i think that fight went about i didn't expect the spinning back kick but it went about how i expected a couple rounds and he's gonna get cipe out of there you know and i'll love to cipe but i mean the dude hasn't fought for three years that's that's a that's a really difficult thing to do especially as you get older and been through so many wars so um yeah i was more excited to see some of the other fights on that card if i'm being honest Okay, fair enough. If if you had to pick right now, if Aspinall fights John Jones next for the title, who do you think wins? Um, I do. I actually do think that John Jones could win that fight. You know, I like. I don't think that we've seen enough from Aspinall. I don't think that he has enough experience, and I think that John Jones is just so smart and he's so good that he would win that fight. But I think it is a risky fight for him, and the threat of getting um like flash KO'd is always there, and I think that's maybe why they might be avoiding it. But well, I mean, I don't know. It's going to be fun, man. You, you know, you said John Jones, one of the greatest of all time. It's really tough to say who's the best. There's so many great, you know, mixed martial artists that have competed, you know, from way back in the, the 90s all up until now. If you had to pick a Mount Rushmore, who would be the the four that you'd put, you know, on there as, as the best to ever do it? I mean, John would be John would definitely be on there. Khabib would definitely be on there. Uh, Mighty Mouse would definitely be on there. And um, probably GSP. It's a good, that's a good four, man. I, it'd be hard to argue against that. Uh, let's but you see, guys, you see guys like Khabib. I mean, when Khabib decided that he was going to walk away from it, he just walked away. And I feel like that kind of puts you at the top of like, what is a mixed martial artist? Like a mixed martial artist, like when we're expressing the arts, like we're ridding ourselves of ego, like we're, re we're reaching our full like self-actualization, you know? And I feel like Khabib did that. He rid it like he was like, when I decide that I'm done, I'm done. I'm not getting persuaded back. There's no money. There's no nothing. Like my ego is completely out of it. I've done my job. Like that's it, you know? And that, that's what I feel like is like, like actual what we're after here in the mixed martial arts. And Mighty Mouse has done a very similar thing. You know, he's not, um, he's not in it with any ego. He's just living his life, having fun, doing his thing, competing in jujitsu. So um, yeah, that that's what I like to see from retirement. You know, I don't like to see this in and out. Maybe I should go back. Maybe I shouldn't. Maybe I should fight this guy. Maybe I shouldn't. You know, it's just like uh, you're in or out. You got to be both, both feet in this game. You know, it's crazy, too. Like when Islam is done, his resume is shaping up to maybe even be better than Khabib's by the time he retires. Yeah, it could be. I mean, it could be. I feel like Islam is a little bit beatable and Khabib was – not, but, um, but we'll see, you know, we'll, we'll see what happens to transition to your division. Uh, got a new champion, Marab. He's supposed to fight Umar next, break that fight down for me. Who, who do you see uh, winning that title fight? Ah, it's hard to say, you know, Umar's good. He's really, he's really good. And they have both such similar styles, you know? So, um, I don't know. That'd be one where I'm just, uh, I'm just excited to watch. Okay. Jan and Figgy is the main event. Uh, geez, I think it's at 6 a.m. tomorrow morning here in the in the East Coast. Are you going to be watching it, or is that too early for where you're at? Uh, I don't know. It depends. You know, if I get to bed early, you know, I'm usually up pretty early. So I'll, par I'll probably be watching. Maybe not right at 6, but um, I'll probably tune in as it gets going. Do you have a pick for that main event? Uh, you know, I'd like to see Jan get it done. Figgy keeps finding a way to get, the, uh, to get it done, but... Um, I think if Jan is on, Jan gets that one done. It's going to be a fun fight to watch. Uh, Marathon MMA, you know, uh, obviously been there for a little while. I love talking to Trey Ogden. I told you last time we spoke, man, like he's such a wealth of knowledge and you could tell he's so invested, you know, as a coach. Um, how has this camp been, man? I saw you had TJ Brown around you recently. Who, who have been like the main guys as we're getting closer to fight night? Um, It's been great. You know, it's been like three camps put into one. You know, and uh, we just kind of shifted a little bit from uh, from the Cody fight. And I brought in some guys like TJ Brown and a couple um, Cody Carrillo, a really good kickboxer who I started with um, from the beginning. And um, he brought he brought in a couple of his guys. And yeah, it's it's, it's been really good. Um, I would just say, yeah, j just a little bit of a shift to get ready for the uh, Felipe, but but not too much. We're just kind of saying the course, everything else is on par. So. Um, it's been great. As far as marathon goes, man, that place is something special. You know, Trey Ogden, he uh he puts a lot, a lot of time, a lot of heart, a lot of soul, and a lot of energy into it. And he's been doing it for years. You know, he was a guy who was writing down notes at Glory that uh, when James Krause was teaching and all this stuff for so long. And I think that when um when you really put your whole heart into something, you really commit to something, 
the whole universe conspires to make it happen for you. And I feel like that's what's happened in a marathon. You know, when I came here, I came here for James Krause and all this stuff happened. He got pulled from my corner the night before the fight and all this. And I and I didn't know where to go. I was kind of lost. I didn't know if I wanted to go to Trey because he was another fighter in the UFC. And I just didn't, I just didn't really like love that and him being my coach. You know, I had more fights in him at the time, but when I went there, it was, um, it was obvious that something special was going on in that, in that gym. And um, I feel like now it's shown. I feel like I, I feel like I was placed here to be with Trey, to be um, learning from him, and to be um, kind of leading the team as far as like the fighters go. And I feel like Trey made that him happen himself just by all the work and the dedication that he's put into coaching for the past twenty years or however long he's been doing it. You know, he's he's wanted to have a dojo since he was a kid. So i feel like everything is just lined up and conspired the way it's supposed to and me and trey we click super well we push each other um i learned so much from him and um it's just really great man i think marathon's a really special place and i think you're gonna see a lot of a lot of talent coming out of there in the coming years and trey has a fight with tiago moises booked in january how how difficult is that for him to do his you know job as a coach and still get in the work that he needs to prepare for his fight is this like is there enough hours in the day for him to do everything he needs to do it is there is you know when whenever when you really put everything to it you know i'm sure his i'm sure his family take it takes a toll on his family you know he's he's there a lot but um but it doesn't seem that difficult um, from my view. You know, he's putting in the work. I think um, I think he gets motivated a little bit when he sees other guys. Like when he sees me putting in the work for my camp, we just kind of feed off each other. And I see him putting in the work for his and all the coaching. And we just kind of feed off each other's energy. And we're, we're just rocking and rolling, man. Like I feel I feel like he's already ready. He has a lot of time for that fight, but he's already ready for it, man. And, and together we're just like, like I said, feeding off each other's energy and just growing and going and going and uh, – it's fun, man. It's it's fun. We're on this uh, speed and train, hay- hanging on, you know, and uh, having a good time doing it. And Garrett Armfield got screwed in his last fight. The the judges, I don't know what's going on with the judges nowadays, man. I never know, you know, whose hand they're going to raise. Like, what was his mindset after the fight? I know on social media, he looked like he was taking it okay, just because a lot of people said that he should have won. But, I mean, what is it like as a fighter, you know, and, and as a teammate when you see someone really get hosed like that? Listen, it's it's nice to know everybody believes you won. It's nice. I think that he believes he won. I believe that he won. I think his opponent believes he won. Um, and all that's nice, and it can lessen the blow. But at the end of the day, like, the financial repercussions of that are real. You know, like, we walk away with half of our purse, you know, and that's, uh, that's a real thing, man. And uh, it's tough, you know, and I, I feel for Garrett. My heart goes out to him, you know. He's handling it like a G. But um, but it's it's gonna be it's gonna be a little bit of a tough road, you know. And I'm just excited for him to get back in there, you know, because um he has had a little bit of a rough go. Um, but but it's a game, and and every everything always plants a seed that can be either grown or can die. And I, I feel like this is really gonna plant a seed in Garrett. He was, I mean, he was just so close, like so close. Like a third round, completely his. I mean, I, I, he won the fight. He 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 won the fight. But I mean, the guy. I feel like. From my view, watching, I know he's going through such hardship, but I'm just watching. I'm like, man, you're so close to just breaking out and having, like, two huge performance of the night wins and, like, two big wins that put you right on. Like, you're not worried about money anymore, all this. So I just hope that he stays the course. I hope that he stays positive and that um, and that he makes this work for him because I believe that he can. I'm sure he will. I, I love talking to Garrett. You guys got a bunch of uh, just good people at Marathon MMA. There's no doubt about that, my man. Uh, as far as you know, your your game plan for Felipe, how much does it change versus preparing for Cody now to having this new opponent in Felipe? It changes a little bit, you know, just because they are different fighters, you know. Um, so we're we're aware of Felipe's dangers, but at the end of the day, it's all about me. You know, at the, at the end of the day, those guys got to come in here and fight me. And um I'm really excited for this fight. At first, if I'm being honest, like I said, I was like, man, like I was supposed to fight a former champ and all this. Now I got this newcomer with one fight, but man, I'm more fired up for this fight than I was for Cody. You know, um, it's nothing against Felipe, but uh, (laughs) I don't know. Like just just the fact that people are counting me out really fucking, really pisses me off. You know, like, and I I just want to go out there and show, prove to everybody who Miles Johns is, you know, and I think Felipe is going to come in there riding high. You know, he comes in there confident. He comes in there, tries to push a pace and tries to bully people. He's got to run into a freaking brick wall. I'm telling you that right now. He's going to it's going to be something different than he's ever faced in the octagon. And people are going to shut their mouths after I put this kid away. So um, 
I'm, I'm excited, man. I'm fired up. And uh, the game plan changes a little bit, but at the end of the day, it's 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 my show. Like it's about it's about what I do, what I do best, and what I do best is I go out there and I hit people hard and I make them back up. And um, we'll see how much he pushes the pace when I punch him in the mouth. Well, you've had a couple of dominant decision victories lately. You said you feel like you're going to put him away. Like when you look at how the fight uh, is going to unfold, like do you have a prediction as to you know <laughs> round one, two? Like how do you see this fight actually you know playing out? Yeah, man, I have a couple of decision victories, but I mean, you look at the guys like Cody Gibson and uh, Anderson Do or not Anderson Do um Douglas. They uh, Andrage, Silva. yeah, they yeah, they Silver Andrage, yeah. The thing about it is, like, I'm really excited for this fight because most of the time people come forward and then I hit them and they stop coming forward. You know, you see, I I came in and fought Cody Gibson on two weeks notice. And since then he's had two dominant performances, put away Brian Kelleher and then completely smashed. And, and how, however you say his last name, you know, look like a black belt of in jujitsu on the ground, you know? And, um, but when I fought him, I was expecting more. I was expecting him to come forward and I was ready for that. And he did not Once I hit him, he didn't. And, uh, day on like he's come forward on everybody, setting him Agamed off, uh, Leo, uh, Leroy Murphy, like all these guys, he came and he's pushed a crazy pace and he has crazy heart and he's a fighter and he's a winner. And then I punch him in the face and he doesn't want to come forward anymore, you know? And some of that is on me, but at the same time, I do my best when people come forward. Like I get most of my finishes when people actually do come forward. And I do think that Felipe is going to come forward. Um, but when he comes forward, he's going to be, he's going to be in for a surprise. So um, I think that this fight, even though maybe it's tougher, I think that it has a bet a bigger opportunity for me to get the finish. Cause when people try to push the pace on me, that's when things really start opening up for me and I can, uh, and I can finish the fight. So, um, yeah, I feel like, I feel like it's going to be an exciting fight. I feel like it's going to be a fan favorite fight. Um, you know, and it's, it's, it's going to be a little bit of chaos, of chaos in there, but man, my warrior spirit's hungry for it. Like I'm, I'm so, I'm so hungry for just somebody, somebody to come and, bring that fighter out of me, you know, that's, I think, um, in my last fight, that's what people were seeing when I was kind of yelling at, um, day on like, come on, come on. Like, you know, once he hit me, like, I'm just, I'm so hungry for that fight right now. And, uh, I know Felipe is going to bring it to me. So, and I'm gonna bring it right back to his butt. So, um, it's going to be fun. Does a dominant win, like, where does that position you for your next fight? I know you're totally locked in on uh, Lima right now, but I know you want to be, you know, climbing those rankings. Do you feel like you're going to get a numbered guy if you win this and you do it dominantly? I should, you know, I feel like I definitely should, you know, I am completely locked in on Lima. You know, I'm super excited for this fight, but I got, I got my eyes open to other things. You know, Dominic Cruz said he's looking for one last dance. Um, one last, one last battle. I would love to give him that last ba battle. You know, I, I really respect Cruz. He's given me a lot of advice and um, I love the guy, you know, he is, he's one of the greatest of all times too, you know, so I would, that'd be an honor to uh, give him his last fight. Um, Rob Font, all these young prospects tried to come out and um, beat Rob Font and none of them could do it. You know, I'd love to jump up the rankings and uh, maybe fight a guy like that, but, but we'll see right now. I'm just focused on people putting some freaking respect on my name, you know, like, people just thinking this lima dude's gonna come in there and take me out like they got they have no idea who i am they really don't so um right now i am fully focused on uh felipe lima and uh it's gonna be fun to 14. can't wait to see you back in there man i i thought i was gonna be there in person you know covering this event but unfortunately I, i'm not making it down to tampa but this is gonna be a, a great event top to bottom a lot of fantastic fights on this card one last question for me I, I love fighter you know walkout songs i i get jacked up when i see someone that's you know coming down to a, a song that's got them pumped up changing things up this time like what can you tell me what you're thinking about for a walkout song yeah, I am changing things up. You know, um, I haven't exactly decided what it's going to be, but I got a few options. But uh, I am going to hold my cards a little close to my chest on there. You'll you get to hear it live. But uh, but yeah, I think I, I think I'm going to change change it up a little bit. And uh, this is definitely going to be one where I just want to get the whole crowd and myself just fired up and uh, just ready to go in there and give war. You know, I think uh, I think the fans need to see it from me. You know, I've had a couple of slower paced fights and um, I need to see it for me and I'm just I'm hungry for it, man. So it's going to be fun.